I couldn't, we couldn't do anything out of the ordinary, like for relaxation, to get to buy something, or you want to say, okay, after he was being here, after five years, we can buy a house, we can do something in that department. But because of my finance, having to take care of his funeral expenses, every penny that I have, that I had to put down to pay his his funeral expensive for like eight or nine months down the road after he I buried him and there was no other income because now I'm home some of the times because not every day I can go to work through his loss it would affect my job I wasn't performing properly on my work so I had to stay home and deal with my loss my grief and everything before I can go into my workplace and do what I have to do and to perform properly so it affected me in a lot of different ways uh, financially and my family as soon as my parents were lost, and as soon as they died in the car accident, my stability changed, my socioeconomic status changed. Like we went from three incomes to one income overnight. And that was extremely devastating and extremely hard because the changes happened instantaneously overnight. Um, and because I was such a young, I was so young when it happened and my brother was also so young. My grandmother had to take a lot of time off work to take care of us. And so her, her employment wasn't too understanding to the bereavement issues that resulted as a result of the loss of my parents. And so she was laid off. And then she had to take work as a domestic worker just to support the family. And I, had, I felt this tremendous responsibility at the age of 13 and 14 to help my grandmother so that the burden wouldn't be too much on her. So I started to work at such a young age. And I feel that because of those circumstances, because of those issues, um, it just compounded my grieving process. Because many times I would feel, if my parents weren't here, I wouldn't have to do this. I wouldn't have to work at such a young age. I wouldn't have to see my grandmother coming home exhausted from cleaning the floors of other people who you know, had the privilege of having their family together, who had the privilege of having money, who had the privilege of, you know, being happy, and who had the privilege of not being bereaved. Now it was only one single income coming in. Before, when my husband was alive, um, there was two income. I still live in the apartment that we rented. We had planned to um, save on a house. I don't have a house. Because, you know, I have to take care of the children's needs all alone now. I have to do what I have to do. So right now, it's, it's a great impact on me and the children financially. Um, you know, just, just daily basic needs. You know, I have to, just on one income, I have to provide that. So it's very, very hard. It's very difficult. Last year, grade 11, like beginning of the year, it was like one of my friends, he passed away. And then to deal with that and going to school, it was kind of hard still. And then like two, three weeks later, one of our hall monitors out of our school, Modern Park, he passed away from an illness. So it was like, it was hard because dealing with my friend's loss and then Someone we know in school that helps us go to class, like a homeowner, he passes away. Our school tried to like help us through that. Like our principals, we told that like I would talk to her and tell her what's going on because I wouldn't like go to class or whatever, and so she started getting worried about me. But they tried to bring people into the school and help us, but it didn't really work. And then on my birthday, my my great aunt passed away on my birthday, so. That's when I just went downhill because it was someone on my family that I really loved. So I, I took it like way worse than that. And then plus all the grief from my friend and then the next guy that passed away. So it was a lot, right? So it was hard, you know, to deal with it. I had my family and my friends. I didn't really talk to nobody like about like only certain people I trust. Like my cousin or one of my aunts, I would just talk to and tell them how I'm feeling. Those are people I can like turn to and lean on their shoulder and cry to, you know, but 
I didn't really express all my emotions to everyone. I didn't let everyone know what was going on inside me, right? And my experience with grief is with when my great aunt passed away on my birthday. And the way I took it was stressful still because that was my best friend. And it was hard to deal with because it was so fast, didn't get to say goodbye or nothing. And it's like I had support from my family and everything and my friends. But it was like there was still something that I couldn't tell people what I was feeling or nothing. I only talked to like certain people. But to this day, it's still hard to deal with the grief still because it's still in my heart. But yeah, that's one thing that's sticking with me is her death still. Um, I had to deal with some loss a while back in 92 when my mom died and in 95 when my dad died, but um, now it's like, it's hard because I was like living with a whole bunch of different people at different times and the way they treated us or me and my sisters was different from the, the way they treated their own kids, so it was it got me thinking, like, how would life be if my mom was still here? Would it be unfair or would we be getting treated the same and stuff like that? This is my sister. <clears throat> the loss of my mother was a, like, big for me because we were young. And your mom is some, someone that's, to me, that's supposed to be there. So when I realized that she wasn't gonna be there, it like bothered me. Like my sister said, you start thinking, get into deeper thinking, like what exactly what she said happens, what would have happened if my mom was here, and so on. But I just, I find it difficult to take my mind off of it, like all the time I think about it. And I was just wondering if you had any suggestions or anything that can help me. Like, what do you do, if you guys don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. what do you do to get your mind off of it? Yeah. Three years ago, Somebody I consider my best friend in my family, my brother, my big brother, got shot. Two to the neck, one to the head. And experiencing that loss was crazy. I started blaming myself for things like, I don't even understand why I did, but just knowing that somebody so close to you is gone in the snap of a finger makes you think about your life, you know? It was really hard for me. It still is. I cry. But I still stay strong and I keep my head up. Because I know that they're watching every movement that you make. You know? so.